Hi, David here. My project is to document the growth rates of Genista monspesulana, also known as French broom, which is an invasive species, and I'm documenting this in Northern California during the springtime. French broom is a problem because it can grow very densely, and in fire suppressed areas, it will accumulate as fuel, especially beneath the forest. This creates a problem in regards wildfires. These are my methods of data collection. The first step was to create plant labels. I made 30 of them, and you can see them in the background there. They're all laid out on the table. Step two was to randomly label my plants. So I chose six plots of five plants each. Then in step three, I measured their plant heights. I came back again one month later, repeated the measurement, and lastly, I did the statistical analysis. All right, so these are the initial measurements I took of the French broom growing in the six different plots. You can see each plant was labeled randomly. So basically, I just pulled labels out of the plastic bag at random and put them on whatever French broom I saw in front of me. And I tried to walk around the area and select an assortment of different sized plants. I took the measurements in centimeters and I made these measurements on March 23rd. The asterisked plants are those that were noticeably clumping from having been previously mowed. So there were some growing back in areas that had been uh, affected previously. And then uh, the rest of them were pretty much growing without any disturbance. This next slide shows the plant heights that I measured on the second date in April. So I let that slide uh, show for a little bit because basically it's not very different from the first raw data collection that you saw on the previous slide. Uh, this uh, represents the results and things get fun later on when we start comparing values. Um, you'll notice there has been considerable growth like if you had looked at plot 5, plant labeled number 29, you would see that uh, the height is now 109.5 centimeters, while previously it was 82.5. So yeah, that's data number 1 there, and here's data number 2. Continuing onwards, the assumptions of the statistical tests are the null assumption is no growth from March to April. The alternate assumption is that considerable growth from March to April with more than 5% of the measured plant height being new growth for this 2016 beginning of the spring season in Northern California. This is part one of my results showing a stem plot of percentage growth. Percentage growth I calculated by subtracting the height of plants in March from the height measured in April and then dividing this difference by the height in April. Up at the top we see there's a potential secondary curve and at the bottom we see there are two possible outliers. 
Part two of my results are to identify the two outliers. They happen to be the two tallest plants of all 30. As for the potential secondary curve at the top of the stem plot, no clues yet, but I will go into this in the discussion section of this report. Here we have part three of my results, a comparison of averages of the percentage growths from each of the six plots. I highlighted plot six because that one represents the most mature stand and it also contains one of the outliers, one of the tallest plants of all. Then you'll see the bar graph gives us a nice picture of the six averages compared. Part four of my results are to group averages. At the top I have standard plants, which is all those that seem to behave normally. And then I have the ones that were asterisked, the previously mowed plants that were clumping, and thirdly, I have the tallest plants, any ones that were over 100 centimeters tall. They all displayed a growth percentage that was less than the rest. And last, the uh, light blue growth average is for all 30 plants. And again, the bar graph is a nice visual display of the comparison between average growth percentages. Notice how the tall plants have a significantly smaller growth percentage. Back to the description of statistical tests. As stated earlier, my plant samples were randomly selected. I measured them twice, and then percentage growths were calculated and plotted in the stem plot. I looked for normality and outliers. I averaged the six sets. I averaged all plants. I averaged groupings by category, produced that nice bar graph. And then I chose to do a comparison of means using a t-test. My reasoning for grouping plants into three categories is based on the observation that there was a visible difference in growth percentages for the tall plants. I chose to further investigate this level of significance by comparing means using the t-test. The purpose of this is to predict whether measuring growth rates of standard clumping or tall French broom could adequately represent the average growth rate for all French broom plants growing in Northern California in the springtime. Here are the first set of results of t-test standard plant versus all plants. We can retain the null hypothesis that there is no difference between means. Again, we can retain the null hypothesis when comparing mode or clumping plants versus all plants. And now, with the tall plant t-test, you see there's 0 0.00376 in the critical value, which is way less than 0.0. So we throw out the null hypothesis and there we go. We shouldn't be basing our measurements of mature French broom as the basis for an average growth rate. Assumptions that I made were that all plants are growing under the same conditions, which is a ridiculous assumption. They're all receiving different amounts of sunlight, etc soil. Also, plants have not been affected by measurement or labeling. That probably doesn't have a big effect on the plants, but you never know. Measuring plant height gives a realistic idea of growth. That's a pretty bad assumption because sometimes the plants are 
producing multiple branches, so it's hard to get a good idea of what the real height of the plant is. And then other assumptions that I made, all kinds of things. Modifications that I made to the data were grouping it into categories, the three categories. And I did not eliminate potential outliers from the calculations. Let's start to discuss this. In the spring, French broom is actively growing. It's flowering and setting seed. It wants to do this before the water runs out in the summer. That's what most of the plants in Northern California do. This is part of the fire climate that exists because there are drought light conditions in the summer. And I'll give you a little time here to play the video. Two of the discussion. French broom produces approximately one quarter its height in growth. Spring in Northern California. This contradicts the null hypothesis of no growth. Previously mowed plants grow more than taller mature plants. Possible co-founders are that different growth conditions exist measurements that I made were inaccurate and other. Applications of this study are basically to target the elimination of an invasive species. How this study could be expanded upon would be to improve the measurement technique, maybe by uh, measuring biomass. Of course, you can't measure the growth rate of the same plant if you've killed it, so you would have to do averages. In conclusion, we realize that the mature Janista monspesulanus do not seem to grow as fast as the babies. That's because they're busy putting out seeds to make more babies. Previously mowed French brooms have a good established root, so they're able to grow pretty fast, but they're not really involved in producing a lot of flowers yet. So this leads to an effective strategy for the elimination of French broom. One, pull out adult plants. That would seem to be a good conservation of energy. Mow the smaller plants and continue mowing plants that have been previously mowed and then pull them out when you can. Did a little bit of reading. Mahalo, Nui Loa, for your attention.